Is Drive teachable? This is a question that came out of last week's vlog, uh, and a couple of you made some comments um, requesting me to elaborate on this question of drive, drive and ambition being the number one CEO differentiator um, from last week's vlog. Um, also, somebody wanted me to talk about spike leadership and elaborate on what I meant by that. They actually go together, um, those two concepts. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. And my first answer is, uh, I guess, yes. I would argue, yes, you can teach drive. There are um, freaks that exist at um, certainly at the senior levels of leadership that I've observed directly uh, who are just um, hungry and burning with drive and you can see it and you can hear it in their voices. Um, I find it very inspiring to meet these people. Um, they're not common, um, but even they can actually learn to leverage their drive uh, more effectively. And certainly so can the rest of us. There was a model um, from my YSC days. YSC is a business psychology consultancy. And they taught us a model which has stayed with me um, with which to think about leadership. And it's called the JDI model, Judgment Drive Influence Model. And on that spectrum, on those three dimensions, um, Influence is the most malleable, so the ability to actually communicate and interact in ways that actually change the world around us through people. Intellect is the least malleable um, and the most genetic, and drive is somewhere in the middle. So it, it is malleable, but there is obviously a difference, significant individual differences when it comes to our levels of drive, and you'll have experienced this yourselves. Um, I think in terms of how to teach drive, I, I want to talk about these two concepts. Firstly, spike leadership. What is that? The spike model says, um, and this came out of 10,000 um, or more actually, um, assessments, half day assessments of leaders um, globally. Um, and what we noticed from that research was that there was not a profile of leader that was, say, balanced in terms of their strengths and weaknesses um, that would predict leadership success. In fact, the opposite was true. The majority of the effective leaders that we saw at the very top levels of leadership were spiky leaders. That is, they had towering strengths and uh, that they were aware of and that they used in their professional lives very deliberately, and they had weaknesses which they're also aware of, but that they basically mitigated. They didn't spend a whole lot of time um, trying to develop those weaknesses. They just uh, mitigated the damage, if you like, of those. But they were very spiky leaders, so they were very, very good at some things and not so great at other things. And my what I've observed is that the single thing that I would point to that enables people to be driven in their lives and passionate about what they do is to, number one, develop an awareness of what that killer strength of yours is, what that thing is that you do that comes naturally to you, that that has been there forever in some kind of a shape or form, and really find a way to have that guide your career. Do as much of that as you possibly can in your life, whether it be connecting with people, whether it be your ability to an analyze a problem and problem solve, whatever those that intrinsic thing that is just that thing that you do that no one else can do, sharpen your awareness of it and deliberately use it um, in your daily activity. If you do that, you will be driven, you will be passionate, you will find that energizing. So that's the first thing that I'd say around um, using your spike strengths to improve drive. The second thing is around personal meaning. I, I think, you know, Viktor Frankl in his book, in his famous books, Man's Search for Meaning, talks a lot about this and there's been a lot of study around meaning and purpose and the importance of meaning and purpose in people's lives, that people need to have a sense that what they're doing matters to them personally. And, uh, and so, I, again, I've got a lot of experience seeing this 
um, used in action where people actually identify and do the work around what it is that um, that they find personally meaningful in life and then really find a way of um, of attaching this or aligning this with your professional role. So one example that comes to mind is uh, there are grit workers in the UK who in, in, during the night before people wake up, they lay down gravel and salt so that people don't slip in the wintertime on the ice. And I remember one was interviewed and he, this big burly guy, British guy, saw himself as an angel of the night who would keep people safe. Um, now that is a very different way of relating to what you do than getting out there and doing some kind of low paid job, which you loathe. He saw himself as having a meaningful contribution to society. And I think everybody needs that to a certain degree. So there, there are two things that I would offer you. One is identify your spike strength and use it to determine your career path. Secondly, Find a way of connecting your own personal meaning, whatever that is, to what your professional role is. And if you can't, move roles. So there's many different ways that we can teach Drive, but I've just offered you two there. Hopefully that's helpful. And I hope you have a wonderful Easter. Take care.